Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Megan from Circular Arts Network. Um, we're based in the UK, um, but again, I, I am based in Scotland, so it's a little bit slightly different. Um, but this is kind of a good illustration of uh, a, the bit wider involvement of what we do um, uh, with our challenges, um, who we work with, um, what it's all about, materials and resources. Um, and again, why we started CAN, um, because there is a bigger network involved with that. Um, so a little bit about me to start with, um, just to kind of introduce myself. Um, so I'm Megan, I'm, this, is my t this is the team here. Um, our two directors, Kate and Michelle, are on the left and um, our, our comms guy, Josh, <laughs> is on the right. Um, and I studied contemporary art and I really found a passion for community work um, through uh, volunteering. So I volunteered for an arts and mental well-being charity and that really uh, I mean, introduced it to me first of all but gave me like a, a, the drive to continue it. Um, so I worked within local communities to help combat loneliness but for the arts. So we did workshops and pop-up shops, anything you can really think of. Um, and uh, this was a project I did last year with um, young girls from uh, high school and we worked with an artist named David Cherry who um, we first all started by drawing in nature and then turning them into wearable sculptures, which was really fun. <laughs> and then again, uh, where I go on holiday a lot, um, in Scotland, you can actually land on the beach, which is quite cool. Um, so, CAN was really developed as part of a research project um, from Sculpture Placement Group, um, who is our like, parent company, um, who I also do engagement for. Um, and that's really all about um, it, supporting artists and promoting the widespread appreciation of contemporary art and sculpture. Um, finding ways to make the arts more sustainable uh, by using tools such uh, just like CAN. Um, providing access to the arts so making it more accessible, um, not just being in a gallery or a museum setting, taking it out of that setting. Um, and also improving the financial security for artists, making it a viable career to pursue no matter what background you come from. Um, so that was started um, in 2020, CAN was started as a development from Sculpture Placement Group. Um, I will refer, refer to that as SPG, just to make a bit of sense. Um, and the founders as well, um, are here are Michelle, um, Kate Robertson, uh, Martin Craig and Nicola Godzel. Um, so they were all friends and um, created this project together to try and support the art and support artists as well. Um, and a little bit off of uh, Sculpture Placement Group, these are the kind of uh, sculptures we'd work with. So we'd have a catalogue of different artworks that are already made. So artists can then offer them up to businesses and organisations to go out on loan. So for example, if you had an office space and you wanted to get art in it, um, add some art to your office, you would kind of look at some of the artworks we'd have and we would work together with that. Um, and a good way for uh, the arts is because um, storage is such a big issue that this helps tackle that almost because then they're being shown and they're being taken out of people's homes and out of storage. Um, so a little bit more on CAN, because um, that's really what, why we're here. Um, why did we initially start CAN and why, why do we do it? Um, it can be quite expensive as an artist to be creative and that can almost be a bit of a barrier to wanting to pursue that if you've got other things to worry about like financial freedom and you've got um, just the you know the time it takes to do all that um, and opportunity as well um, if you're not within those spaces to have different materials and be exposed to different sort of ways of working um, that can be quite a challenge as well and of course, um, sustainability is tough to define in itself. So um, it's a good starting place if you're looking to become more sustainable. 
Um, so this is the kind of information you provide if you were going to use it um, on a day-to-day -day basis, so really how it works. Um, it's a bit like Facebook Marketplace where you would list items and you could claim items as well. Um, so you would first list your item with a price, a location um, and pictures. Um, you would then tag your listing in what kind of category it is. So if it's wood, um, if it's paper, if it's uh, furniture, if it's an ob you know, uh, equipment, you would, that's how you would tag it. Um, and you could share it however you liked. We also um, share most listings on our social media to help get m more networks to see it who maybe aren't on the site or haven't seen certain listings. Um, you can also claim items. So, uh, for example, if you were to sign up and somebody had listed um, this table, for example, you would then, and you liked it, you could claim it, and then you would be put directly in touch with the user who listed it. So it's like a peer-to-peer -peer interaction, um, which we have aimed for, but doesn't always work. <laughs> um, and then also there's the arranging collection, um, which we usually always help with, but it's great if you can do that between two people. Um, so just to kind of visualize, these are some of the things that you could find on the site. So put the top right, there's poster paint, um, there's metallic spray cans, uh, sacks, um, fabric. These are all folders on the bottom left, so things you would get in schools. Um, and then these are just various construction materials we were donated. Um, so it's really varied, it can really be anything. Um, it's cross art form, so uh, that really means that uh, different sectors can use it, like uh, theatre, film, fashion, uh, and of course visual arts. But it's not um, limited. You can really use it for anything. Um, and yeah, it, what we really try and drive is why we use CAN. And um, you know, you could reduce your landfill contribu contributions by introducing circular economy to your waste management program. Um, it's accessible, so a lot of the materials are for free. There's a small portion that, that are uh, being sold, which is totally fine and we're totally open to that. Um, but it's great if you want to offer up something for free and hopefully you can get something in return for free as well. Um, and also you're connecting with other artists and creators who you might not have uh, connected with before or you, you would continue a relationship with in the future. Um, so a good question is what else can I find? Um, we don't just offer materials, so you can use it for transport. For example, if you were going to an event in the city and you had a car and you were going to drive, you could make a listing that you were going to go to this event and you could carpool with another person. Um, you could also upload equipment, um, for example, in theatre, stage lights, projectors, cameras, um, furniture as well, for example, this table. Um, we recently had uh, an amazing listing from one of the museums in Glasgow and it was exhibition seating and that went like wildfire. It was really popular. Um, and of course, skills. Um, it's not one of our most used categories, um, but it's a great way to offer something to your local art community. Um, if you have a certain skill that you could share. Um, and as well with transport, um, it's not just um, uh, sharing or car sharing, we can also deliver materials as well if that's a barrier to using it. Um, and we have actually, we faced a lot of challenges um, within the first couple of years. Um, we did launch in 2020, so it's you know, not the most ideal time. Um, and we, re we have really struggled with growing it because where we're based. So we live in Glasgow. So we want it to be UK wide. It's really hard to engage with other networks, for example, in London or um, in smaller towns in, or rural areas. Um, when you look at the website, it does look like it's just 
one area. So that can be a barrier in itself because if I was from another location, I would think I can't use that. But it really is open for anyone to use. Um, marketing, we have quite a small team, as you may have seen from our team picture. Um, so the capacity to grow is really hard when there's not that organic marketing. You kind of have, a, have to have a designated person doing that. Um, and really managing our expectations as well. Um, running a platform of any kind comes with its own challenges, but we initially thought that it would run itself and people would you know, engage peer to peer, they would talk, they would share, but we found that we've had to get involved quite a lot in between and be a bit of a middleman. Um, and I guess that's not really sustainable when you want it to grow and get bigger. If at the moment it's smaller and it's, we have to get involved, it can be a challenge. Um, but we're hoping that we kind of take a step back in the future from it. <laughs> Um, so, the main barriers to using CAN, really, we've defined as time and storage. With time, um, because you're connecting with other artists, you're, or even just create, creative people, um, it's almost like waiting on a reply. You're having to wait for someone to get back to you to arrange a collection time or um, things like that. So, it, it can be challenging because not a lot of people have patience and want to receive things straight away. You know, you, what you can do, you can receive things delivered. You have things delivered next day, you can have it, you know, it's super easy now. So waiting on something can feel awful and <laughs> really hard. Um, and also uh, working with uh, galleries and museums, um, a lot of the time between different projects, you only have a sh short turnaround. So you need that material gone or you need someone to come get it. You just need it away um, to make space for other projects. Um, and of course, storage goes hand in hand with that because not everyone has space to hold on to material or objects. Um, and as well, if you're trying to give away something, to hold on to it for weeks on end can be really difficult, if you, especially if you want to give it away. Um, but yeah. That's, I'd say those are our biggest challenges um, and barriers. So we um, have thought about solutions. Um, during COP26, we launched our first mini depot and um, it was really about the international artists and activists coming to the city. We really wanted a central location for them. Um, because especially if you don't know the area, it can be quite a challenge, you know, finding materials and coming to another country with, you know, a suitcase. You're not going to have loads of materials to make things. Um, so we uh, managed to donate loads of paper and uh, wood to create uh, signs for protests. And um, there was, like, loads of workshops on during COP26 that um, it was such an amazing... Um, way to see the materials transform with people in their workshops they were, they were carrying out. Um, so we have maybe three locations, three or four locations. Um, and this is our biggest one. Um, when I say they're small, they are small. Um, <laughs> and this, yeah, this is our biggest one, which kind of shows you we have like bits of plywood. Um, at the back, there's rolls of carpet. Um, and these are all just kind of more bits of wood, bits of paint. Um, and yeah, it's, it's worked really well. It's been really successful um, because it takes away that barrier of time because you're able to just go somewhere and collect a material and you can also go there and drop off material. So if it, it really works well because then you can also exchange while you're there. Um, rather than having to converse with someone else. Um, and yeah, it does, it does work as a, as a um, solution. Um, and we really hope to have these in different cities around the UK at the moment. Um, but it's really about who we work with. We um, approached organizations and that's how we managed to get these. We secure these for free and we don't have to pay anything for these. Um, 
but that's just through uh, conversations and planning, really. Um, there was lots of organisations who were more than happy to give us space within their space. Um, so it wasn't as if we were taking over um, and changing it all because they could then use it. So it was also a win-win either way. Um, so yeah, it's worked quite well. Um, to kind of think of solutions for transport, we've partnered with small uh, local delivery um, organisations uh, like cour courier bikes and cargo bikes um, who deliver things mostly small. Um, we posted material swap events and uh, we also offer um, an uplift of surplus materials from museums and galleries. So this has actually worked quite well. We would kind of go with a van um, and charge a small fee and take away any material that they weren't going to use um, from projects or exhibitions they've just had. And then that goes back into the local community to then use. Um, and also um, we can charge a small fee for delivery um, if there's a user needing something delivered from a depot or from another user, we can also offer that. Um, it's maybe not as sustainable as we'd like because we would really love people to just connect together, but it, if it helps and solves a, uh, you know, a barrier, then that's great as well. Um, <laughs> sharing events. So we started this project um, to really tap into the rural areas of the UK and Scotland. Um, so there's um, places, for example, called Inverness and Fife, who aren't really connected via public transport compared to a major city would be. Um, everyone's quite spread out, so it's quite hard to exchange materials. And we thought of a solution to host a can van day, um, where we fill the van up full of material and drive around one, one location, so doing different stops, where people could come and collect materials and also drop off materials. Um, also, you know, there's a, a dog. So <laughs> um, and the other one we did was in um, uh, Inverness, and that was a one location where we set up for the day, unloaded everything, and people just came and brought things and took things away. And also they connected with people while they were there. So it was really amazing to see um, people offering services on the spot to each other, which was, it was, it was really great. Um, I can't remember why we stood in a box, but there was obviously a reason. <laughs> um, and yeah, these, these have worked quite well. We are planning to keep this an ongoing project um, and hopefully developing that in other areas outside of Scotland, um, hopefully. Um, so we attended COP26, which was, which was in Glasgow in 2021. Um, and we collected materials. Um, this is uh, Kate, one of the directors, and Josie, who's an artist. Um, we collected materials um, on the last day of COP because there was some issues with where they were going and who was collecting them. So um, we got these waterproof fabrics and each one had a different pattern on it. Some had text and they were actually used as the posters for inside the kind of exp exhibition. And we also got these plants that said COP on them, which were then given to artists to use for exhibitions and um, all for free as well, which is great. Um, and then we hosted some competitions with um, Manchester University, the fashion department. So we shipped all of the fabric we got. We got bundles and bundles of it and just didn't know what to do with it. Um, and these guys thought of uh, waterproof jackets, which is <laughs> great. And you can just see how, for example, the previous one has now been turned into this jacket here. Um, and they work really well as well because um, students is one kind of uh, target we've struggled with because um, it's maybe not on their radar as much. So when uh, we host competitions, it's really great to work with universities and students to try and encourage them to use it um, and to think about where the materials from and could they be used and um, stuff like that. 
Um, so there's one industry we've worked with, which maybe isn't uh, who you would normally think of, um, and we kind of tapped into the construction sector and um, approached them to offer up any surplus waste. Um, so we formed partnerships with a company called HSD and um, they basically offered a service where we could collect materials um, from their site, their actual construction site. Um, so from the bottom you could see how you would collect it um, and the kind of top images where it would all stay and how it would be displayed. Um, and during this partnership, we kind of pre we prevented 100 kilograms of waste going to landfill. Um, but we did find it slightly challenging because um, there was that kind of unfamiliarness with going to a construction site and that not really being where you would normally go. Um, and also, you know, having to arrange with the site manager and having to get all you know dressed with safety it was maybe a bit more challenging to convince people to use um, and also we um, passed on the number of the construction site manager rather than ourselves going and I think people were a bit intimidated to you know phone up and be like is this hello can I come and get um, some wood or some scrap metal it, it, yeah it was a bit of a challenge and that's something we're still working towards is to try and find a way to connect these two sectors together. Um, but at the moment, it's, it's worked well with some projects. Um, and um, Josie, who's an artist based in Glasgow, she um, studied at the Glasgow School of Art. She um, came to us and sustainably sourced um, blue paint, um, chicken wire, um, I'm not sure how you refer to that here, but chicken wire, um, which is this bottom image, and timber as well, and managed to create her whole degree show out of sustainably sourced materials. Um, and she continues to do that with us as well. Um, and this is Kerry, who we've worked with. Um, she kind of works with um, infants and uh, does a lot of workshops with babies and she created this sensory room out of uh, CLS timber and that very that same fabric the students made jackets out of. So she tied it to timber and then created this kind of sensory room for the workshop. Um, she also took these kind of foam blocks and used them for a workshop with babies as well. Um, and yeah, it was really amazing to see how she just kind of works with anything um, and has created this little room, it was great. Um, so the can site at the moment is limited to the UK. Um, we're looking at how we could open source that or um, collaborate with, with uh, partners to create a more uh, universal site that anyone could use um, but I was just thinking of like what you could do at the moment um, and how you could adopt these practices within your own professional career or your own lives without having a physical site. Um, so there was discussion um, with uh, some participants from the We Will The Retreat of creating a Facebook page um, where you could all add different communities, different um, you know, friends you have or people you know that would engage with it. And you could share different topics, you could share materials, you could share events, you could whatever felt natural to you. Um, you could also approach uh, local organisations uh, and ask if they would offer up any materials. This might be something you already do. Um, and yeah, you could also adopt the can-do attitude. Um, so that really, in, in essence, means uh, checking for existing alternatives. So thinking about what materials you're using, is there something else I could use that would be more sustainable? Um, accepting imperfection, which is maybe hard as well to do. Um, you know, we also have our challenges and we're not perfect as a personally and as an organisation. Um, we haven't always got it right and um, it's 
great to accept that. <laughs> and whatever small change you do has a big impact, you know, no matter what it is. Um, need sustainability, design, uh, thinking about design in the production stage. So maybe thinking about designing for disassembly. Um, if you have an exhibition on, um, could you flat pack it? Could you create something that's then moved around different exhibitions um, and uh, organised for life after art, thinking about the legacy of your work, thinking about how long would this last um, by using this material and thinking about the future of it um, before you make it. Um, so these resources, um, the Can Do Attitude, is available on our website. So there's some things that you can actually use without having, you know, the, the listings and that kind of thing. You could still adopt certain bits of it. Um, and we've also created some how-to videos. Um, they're very simple. <laughs> they're very uh, to the point, um, making a frame and how to strip a palette. I, I didn't know this until I watched this. <laughs> um, so these are all available on our website as well. So there's small things you could kind of look at and think about um, as well. Um, so <laughs> a little bit of uh, reflection from the We Welder retreat. <laughs> um, I obviously kind of come from uh, city I don't get to experience nature that much so it was really really amazing um, I mean picking fresh vegetables I've never done that before which sounds insane um, the food was amazing um, yeah where I was staying was amazing I met the cutest cat ever <laughs> um, and as well just being kind of immersed with all these people that I'd never met before was great um, and also like the language barrier as well. I, I, I had no expectations of go, like, going into this and um, kind of having two conversations almost, listening to the language I don't understand and then it being translated was also insane. Um, <laughs> and where I was staying was amazing. It was um, being right in nature was great. I could hear the cows next to me and dogs. And yeah, it was just, it was just great. It's something uh, yeah, always kind of remember, um, and uh, we I hosted this little <laughs> session. <laughs> uh, I hosted this session um, on uh, I think it was Friday, Friday, and I really wanted people just to collaborate. That was my main goal, um, and to just have a hands-on making activity. I initially went in with the idea of making a nest and severely underestimated how big it was gonna be. <laughs> um, but the, the participants were brilliant. They were so smart and so they just kind of got on with it. They didn't have to sit and think and analyze what they were gonna do. They just used what they had available, what I kind of forced them to do. And <laughs> Um, as well, they decorated it so gorgeous as well. Um, so yeah, I was really, really impressed and I was so inspired by everyone who was there. Um, and hopefully that's something they can add to and make a bit more uh, padded <laughs> eventually. Um, but yeah, that's kind of um, a little bit about us. I probably spoke quite fast. Sorry if there was any bits you didn't understand. Um, but there's bits here that you can kind of contact us. You can also scan this barcode and it should take you to our kind of link tree and it'll have loads of different bits in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to answer anything. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, how, or from some of the maybe too few success to stories or matchmaking, mm. how did that come to life? I think this is such a nice thing. Like, I came into the space and I saw the really nice, colorful posters that are mm. written down because something else needs to come in. Yeah. Like, wow, I want a few of them in, in my room. 
<laughs> yeah, um, so the founders, um, I'll maybe just go back up so you can see this bit. Um, I'll go here. Um, so the founders were all uh, friends from uh, university and school and um, they they were all artists themselves or working in the arts and found these kind of challenges and barriers and this is their kind of way of thinking um, what could we do to help that and this is one way and that's really to tackle the storage and also it helps with the financial freedom because it allows artists to get paid to lose a fee in doing this mm -hmm. so um, you would offer up your sculpture for example um, some information about it and then if an organization was interested we would do a lot of the managing between that um, and it would be on loan so it's called SVG loan it'd be on loan for maybe a year and then it can come back or they can extend it so I before I came here I recently had a couple of um, contracts to, to re, redo because people want to extend it. They loved having it in their, for example, we have an, an, an accountant's firm and they have this sort of blue wave sculpture um, on the wall and it's been great for them. Um, and that's, yes, yeah, so this is our second year. Um, and this one is outside within a, um, a place called Young Enterprise Scotland. So a lot of young people go there who are interested in workshops and um, enterprise, maybe starting their own business. This would what they'd be kind of met with at the beginning. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really inspiring um, when you get to see the work. And it, it could be a work that was created years ago. So for example, it could be a work that's created in 2016 and they've had nowhere for it to go. But this kind of tackles that and makes it puts it back into the world and puts it back on display and uh, yeah it's great. <laughs> what do you think uh, inspired the idea or the material as in how can mm. artists uh, be inspired to use mm. the materials yeah, that you would have? Yeah I mean I've always like and before I got involved, I thought it was the idea, because it's like, what do I want to do? Do I want to make something about this or something like this? But then when I came into this organisation, I felt like it was great to think more about the material. I mean, it's good to have an idea of what you, wa what you want to talk about, for example, um, and then, then kind of shipping back into what material suits that. Is there something available? Or if there's not, what can I use that's a better alternative to for example, like really strong paint <laughs> or like something if it's outside. There's like certain ways you could think about it. If you were going to go with the idea first, you could, yeah, do it maybe simultaneously. <laughs> but I mean, it's, I guess it really is dependent on how you work as a person. Not everyone can just go, I'm going to use that. Because you need to be inspired by the material as well. Like. I wouldn't be able to work with like uh, like knitting. I, I, I just can't do that. I prefer to be uh, using like harder materials and like plaster or wood. So I have to be inspired by it as well. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And because you did mention storage being a, an issue, mm -hmm. like, does the platform, like, so I could list some things but keep it at my space and just, so it adds, we, I don't have to bring materials to your storage. Yeah. I just keep it to my space and then yeah. it was just a platform for people to meet and join. Yeah. But and you also offer the, the storage in case. 
Yes, yes, that's that's kind of off the site at the moment, but we hope that um, we're working with a website developer. So when you list an item, you could then choose where it would stay. So you would either click, it's like a drop down box, for example, you would either click uh, my address or you would click this mini depot or this one, depending on the location, and then that would sort of sort it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I have a big garage or whatever. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that would be amazing. I think especially once you've created those relationships, you can then, I feel like you'd be more confident or maybe even people would be more uh, like happy to use that or resource. Um, but with one of our um, many depots as well, um, we sometimes store artworks. Um, so we did an open call recently um, and it's in an old shopping centre. Um, some of the shops in our shopping centres are closed down or they're just windows, there's nothing in them. So um, there's this organisation called Outer Spaces who offer these places to artists as studios or you can, what we've done is put sculptures in the windows um, and we've also been able to use that as a can mini depot. So there's materials in it and there's also uh, artworks in it, which has been really great. It's funny. Why do you think that uh, the skills part doesn't uh, work so good? I think we've had a couple, but they've never really, no one's really ever been willing to take it. I don't know if it's because of the certain skills that was, that was offered. For example, one was 3D printing, but no one seemed to really take that up or not, not that we could see. And also, I don't think there's enough of the skills offered. I think there's one or two listings, but then people forget that it's there. They forget that you can offer that. Um, and you can, the transport one as well, people forget that you can use that because it looks more material. So you kind of forget about it. But I, I don't, I really don't know why people don't, off, why do people don't take up the skills more often. Um, I, I think it's probably something that's just for, maybe forgettable or not on their radar. Um, if they're looking for something specific. So you really need to keep those conversations going. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're like, yeah, if you're. Mm. Oh, it's a hard question. It's a good question, but it's a hard question. Um, I mean, the typical, the kind of thing you would say is wood, but it's, it's really like paint goes really well. Like if you have full bottles of paint, like that's great. Um, I'm trying to think of. An example that was weird, but people loved. Um, weird. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, wood's great because it's expensive. Um, like, uh, fabric goes really well. Um, also, like, kind of small, like, random bits of material. Like, we get these, you know, like, toilet roll tubings, like cardboard tubes. They are really popular but for some reason. <laughs> don't know why. So if you like collect all your toilet roll when it's empty, I'm sure you'll be very popular. <laughs> so it's quite popular. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, there's, shall I go back to this? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, these sacks were really popular as well. People they're very large. The spray cans are very popular. Yeah, it's really hard. Oh, we have loads of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to production. Um, any more questions? D 
would anyone like to use it if it was available here? Mm, yeah. What do you think you would use it most for? I feel like, well, even though I don't have it, mm -hmm. I feel like offering space, mm -hmm. uh, like a transitory space, because we, in our life, have a lot of storage needs, and we have a partner in Karantebesh whom we can, for sure, involve in being a transit uh, so I, I, I used to, we used to need space <laughs> for storing stuff in between and we had a lot of material to grade because we didn't have storage. Um, yeah, so that was, I, I feel like offering space <laughs> <laughs> in transit. Mm -hmm. But then this thing about artwork, like, wow, there is so much uh, stuff that dies quickly mm -hmm. in this domain, like I, I, I'm dying to connect some businesses that we talk to or whatever saying, hey, open up for your community, bring more life into your, uh, you know, veterinary clinic and mm. really nudge those people to connect back with yeah. life within their community. So I personally feel like I want to more connect artists with the, the, you know, the dead world that is sort of, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a great place to introduce art as well. Cause it's I'm really inspired by the thing about mm. art. What does it happen yeah. afterwards? I yeah. want some posters from here, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like the legacy of those posters. Where are they going to go now? Who's traveling? Where is traveling. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 big walls. <laughs> maybe arrange one of them <laughs> um, but yeah hopefully it's something that you'll be able to use in, in the future yeah and also transforming spaces I mean there are lots of materials you can use I mean to transform a cultural space a community space uh, mm -hmm. for a party production for theatre uh, anything like that Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you guys find the funding to really have some functionalities to be a matchmaking service, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. But that's me from there. It's like, I'm already inspired to see about this depot <laughs> thing that we have. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even for the legacy. Hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't take like loads of work. You just have to fill it, and you need someone to do that. You need to hire a van, and um, maybe a space that's not well publicly accessed, but has some sort of lock or has a door or that you can have a pin on or something that allows people to just access it when they need it. If, and you can give them. That's one of ours. We have like a pin on the door and we pass on the pen when they need to go. So it's not pu wide, not public knowledge what the pen is, but you know, <laughs> if someone needs it, they're, they're given it. And it works really well because we don't have to go and assist. We don't have to, you know, do anything. They just are there and they can take what they like or they can add things. Yeah, so that, that is probably one of our most successful projects. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> so let's create a Facebook group. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I we have friends in Fankuriyajur in Karansebesh who have a very big space and who store stuff for us. So I, I already sent some messages to the guy saying, it's busy, I need to see you. <laughs> and uh, I think one of the results of our meeting uh, would be a Facebook uh, group uh, for Timisoara, uh, like a matchmaking place for putting resources up for uh, grabs or uh, searching for resources. And
and uh, I think it's a great start for um, what for the YouTube community and thanks for the inspiration. And very concretely, where can we have a bit more brain space to talk about that? We're gathering at the end of November in this sort of theme, uh, probably at Kaba Ambasada, uh, hopefully, certainly, um, and allowing some time to think through a bit some, you know, what kind of pilot, like we actually probably gonna sit down and uh, figure out some kind of technicality set together. Great, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>